Hey yo, one two one two. Guess who is back? The Fly Nerve Group is in the building, taking it back to the roots right here in the living room. Coach East Soul Star, none other than Cosmo Galactus, aka Cos G, aka uh, um, <laughs> um man. We gotta, we, we gotta lead a long intro. Yeah, man. you guys be our Amby man. Shout out to Amby Warhol, K Max, Moxie, all y'all man, Corey. Char C, the whole fly in the group. The whole fly C. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we are, we taking it back, si- sipping on something good. And uh, man, Last of Us. Last of Us. Well, no, let's just talk about us for a second, man. It's the fly in the group. A, it is us. Okay, yes, talk you about know, it. No, um, we're just truncating back to, uh, taking it back to the original original formula you know what i mean original formula kaz and sean everyone else will be a part in the future but right now we're just taking it back and doing the podcast man where we um discuss all the dope fly shit you know and um comic books hip-hop culture you know all the lords man but you know if you don't see us in the podcast you see us in the streets man for example last night man shout out to fillmore green um, yeah, yeah. yeah, he had his little uh, shindig, his performance. Yes, sir. Um, the Cost of Living album with Apollo Brown and Rashid Hadi. You know, both of them was there, and uh, they had a beat battle, which was dope. Um, Apollo Brown and Rashid Hadi. Yeah, yeah, oh, they wow. were going back and forth. They nice. went back, back on the okay. beats. It's okay. hard. So, um, yeah, it was dope. It was a dope little event. A lot of the folks was out. You know, shout out to Neek. Shout out to. Uh, oh, dope. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to that cat. Shout out to um, Andreas Haley. He he performed. Nice. Um, El Man, um, El Gore, Gordo. Oh, they, so they they was yeah. back in substance. Yeah, yeah. They, well, they did a couple joints. Couple yeah, yeah. Substance? They did a couple joints. And then, uh, I wanted um, they to do joint when they stand back to back. Nah, and spit. Yeah, I don't think uh, so. I love I love seeing But I like that one. I know that one what you talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love when they do that Yeah, joke. Shout out to Andreas. It was good talking to him and seeing him back in the um spirits. You oh, know, yeah, that's a, that's a good you know, a lot of these cats here they haven't performed in a minute and stuff like that. So to see yeah. this is just refreshing exercise. I, I feel the same. I feel yeah. the, I feel the exact same. The it's not too many what's going on. Yeah, with exactly. The, There's know? no it's it's you only got two, three options these days. Uh, if no one's inviting you out just to like go and rock or like book something on your own, it's kind of it's, it's yeah. the landscape is so so different. It is, it is, but it's cool because we get just on some independent stuff and throw some events like last night, which was dope. Um, exactly. I am God, you know, he he did a set as well. You know, a lot of people first time seeing him, and yeah, he went heavy. You know, what I mean, he went super hard. So um, then there's Fillmore, of course, he did this motherfucking thing, you know, and um. That album, that album is dope. The album is dope. The album is dope. Cost of Living is dope. If you haven't peeped it or streamed it, check it out for Fillmore Green. Check that shit out. It's pretty solid, pretty solid work. And all his other work is dope, too. So just check out Fillmore Green in general. And that, uh, you know that I mean? new Nick album. And that new Nick, yeah. He was it? D. Wooten? Yeah. <laughs> D. Wooten. D. Wooten. <laughs> you know, and um, he been getting a dope, positive reception as well. You know, this is Chicago, so I always say these are the uh, forefronts. Of the guys that's putting out music that's solid, in my opinion, and is pushing the culture forward. Indeed. So, um, yeah. So, Sky Zoo came through. They did their thing, and um, you know, it it was a dope reception. It was dope. I like Sky Zoo. Yeah, he also had an Apollo Brown album. So, yeah, yeah. So that yeah. Uh, it was it was it was Apollo Brown night. Yeah, it was Apollo <laughs> Brown. But Sky Zoo, he did his uh Snowfall album, which. I like that album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how he told that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty dope how. You know, sometimes conceptually, you don't think about anything to write. You know what I mean? Like, what you going to write about? And he, he, you know, he did his American Gangster, like Jay-Z. Yeah, he you did. Know I mean? Yes, he so, did. Well, I mean, he, Jay-Z and Biggie are his, are his idols. Well, there you and, go. And you can hear the J in his, in, mm-hmm. in his flow. You can hear Absolutely. the Absolutely. Absolutely. He's just, I, the, what I like about Sky Zoo is that he's not afraid to play with your perception of how a bar should sound. Like, mm-hmm. because, oh, yeah. because, like, w- just think, like, okay, one of my favorite bars is like, um, the same place he, he was talking about guns, but he used sampling as the overlay for talking about guns. Okay. Okay. He, he was like, the same one that's wherever that drummer was, I'm just following the tradition, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, he say he says these little unique things, and I, I like the fact that he is like he is kind of unashamedly himself. Mm. 
and he's not one of those. His ghostwriting pays for his lifestyle. Yeah, so yeah. it allows him to to make the music to do he what he want to do. Yeah, right, right. He puts out the album he wants to make. Who he ghostwrite for? Uh, don't who, know if he no. won't be a ghost. <laughs> ghost, g- g- so, ghost, sweet. Uh, unlike, <laughs> <laughs> unlike, uh, unlike Mad Skills, he is he, he ain't putting nobody. Who Mad on. Skills right oh, for Will Smith? He uh, put it out there. Uh, yeah, he put he because t- first he wasn't he wasn't saying he shit. wasn't saying but he he wrote for Will he wrote for he wrote for Shaq. <laughs> Shaq cool. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure he done wrote for some of everybody because I mean it's it's just one of those things. Like, so I saw how the prince. Yeah, wrote he's all right, but he's not real. Yeah, 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 he's all right. <laughs> Don't talk to me about real. them scenes with skill. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Uh, exactly. whatever man so alright so that's you know that's a little you see us out here man that's what the Fly Nerd is about Fly Nerd group is about being at these fly events fly joints the Roots was actually here at the Soft awesome. Shed you know what I mean so it was a really popping night pretty active night and so much other stuff was going on yesterday too I mean, the city is definitely back alive. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely back alive. You can't. The crowds ain't what they used to be, but the city is definitely back alive. Right, right. So you know, it was cool seeing some of the homies, seeing some of the fellow f- photographers. Um, shout out to uh, Tito. Shout out to uh, a lot of other cats that was out there doing work, man. You know what I mean? I mean, from what I saw from people who was posting, a lot of a lot of people went to that group show. I, uh, yesterday. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was, it was dope, awesome. man. It was dope. And it was it's hey man, it's the roots. They deliver, you know what I mean? Thought is amazing. Like I said, you know, they don't need no opening DJ and no opening actor right. They warm up is the opening. <laughs> Their warm up is the opening. You know, you come out and do a few songs you don't even know you're gonna do. Right. I mean they can come out and do my mellow my man and I just I'd be hyped off that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> speaking about that, you know, um we had a little tragedy in hip hop. Yes, sir. You know, um, recently, one of the artists from my one of my favorite groups. And I'll just be up front and say, it. someone say Chicago don't really big up this group, but I have to beg to differ. Um, De La Soul always been hip. Yeah, if you a hip hop head, man, you always fuck with De La yeah, Soul. De La has been amazing here. Yeah, man. You know, so from. Three feet high and rising is all the way down to the grind date and even to the recent album. What's the uh, album? The, um, the, the nobody. The no, uh, anonymous uh, nobody. Anonymous nobody. Yeah, yeah. anonymous yeah. nobodies. You know, it's like thirty years of work. You know, um, dope crew. They could have broke up a long time ago. Man, they they could have broke up a long they time. They stay super solid. They stay solid. For it, life. They, they, <laughs> they they did what I wanted try to do. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I wanted Tribe to stay together and and have as many as 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 many albums as they like. Yeah, I would yeah. love to, I would love Tribe because I always tell people Tribe catalog. I don't count the, that remix album because that was like I don't count that. I don't count that. I don't count that. Like so when I look I at, count to the love movement. That's it. Yeah. And the la- what? Oh, well, so the, the last, last album, yeah, the, the last, la- I give him the last yeah, album because he put that together and that was his heart. So yeah. um yeah. But um, De La Soul, man, from Three Feet High Rising. If you don't know who De La Soul is, it is a crew that's from a legendary, a group from a legendary crew in uh, from New York, Long Island. They're from Long Island, but the crew native is native tongues. They're from everywhere, man, sure. like Tribe Called Quest, um, Queen Latifah, Black Sheep. Common. Common. Most Deaths. Uh, Most Jungle Deaths. Brothers. Jungle Brothers, you know, um. Get that the beat nuts were native tongue. Be nice. Yeah. Be nice. Yeah, what's that song? Q tip, he deal with the whole list. Buster Rhymes yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Buster Rhymes is in the house. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a it's a um it's vibes a, and stuff. No, no, no. No, was that not vibes and stuff? Nope. It's a um it's a B single. It's a B side. It's not even on the album. Oh it's one of those um love movement like Oh, okay, um, okay. One of those remix okay. albums and then um he was saying the whole list of everyone that was down with Native Tongues. I was like, yeah, that's dope. And you mentioned the B-Nuts. So, yeah, dope crew. Um, De La Soul was more of, you know, they had that hippie image at first. You know what I mean? Three Feet High Rising. You know, shout out to Prince Paul. They definitely took a lot of sonic chances. Yeah, they took a lot of sonic but chances. Prince Paul but, is that guy. But it was worth it, you it know? It was. Because they, they came out with not only hits, but a monumental album. If, like, if you 
ever heard a skit on an album, it's because of yeah. De La Soul. Early, con- early yeah. concept album. Yeah, early album. concept album. I mean, what they did Prince on- Paul, De La- yeah. Prince Paul is just the master of that anyway. Yeah, but he is the master of the concept album. He started that with De La Soul. Well, I don't yeah, know. yeah, I think he did. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's- he could. He, I think there were some hints of it on Stetson Sonic. Yeah, yeah right, right. That's why I was. Yeah, that's why I was. I, I didn't want to step. But on I don't know though. if they. I don't know if they went full on like for an album. I think it was more song. Like this song is like one of those. Okay. Okay. So yeah, man, hitting hard with Buddy. Um, you know me, myself, and I. You know they they broke down the walls of that music. And Tribe was doing the same thing with, you know, um, Left My Wallet jazzy. and El Segundo. No, yeah. their first album was... Oh, the, yeah, the first album was Hippity too. Hippity they both yes, was yes, hippity, yes, yes. hippity hip. Hippity <laughs> was a hippity hop. Yeah, they yeah. were just hippity hip. Yeah, uh, Tribe went super jazz on... Um, low End Theory. On the Low End Theory. De La kind of went more artistic with De La, De La Soul dead. dead. And that's when they killed the hippie and stuff and went straight like... I yeah, they want like we said, Balloon Mind yeah, State comes out. But Balloon Mind State come out, and that's when they start <laughs> to me that was putting on the regular clothes and shit. The bubble coats. And, and, I mean the only the only album in my mind that competed with that was Midnight Marauders. Because Midnight Marauders yes. just went. It was a monster. It was a monster. It was a monster. But um okay. But I get Balloon, you that. But Balloon Mind State was like right there. Every alternative year, Tribe would drop an album, and then De La Soul yeah. would drop the alternative year. Um, for that counter, that's a hard counter, but um, it's still leveled off because, I mean, Bloom Mind State had great... Like, that's what got me into yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, Break Ego, of Dawn was my choice. Break of Dawn is still my favorite yeah. record. You know, um, Ego Trippin', Ego Trip. In Focus. I like Patty Duke. Patty, I was I about to right. say, Patty Trish Duke. Blood, Patty Trish Duke. Blood. <laughs> and the song with Biz Markey, man. Yes. I love that record. Yeah. So, you know, there's a few songs on there. And they introduce a lot of MCs on their um, yeah, on do. their projects. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you get do. the Shorty Nomads. You know what I mean? The Shorty I don't know. Shorty? I'm, I'm Where you at, Shorty? Yeah, Shorty no mas. Come on, Shout man. Out. Let's do an interview or some <laughs> shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, um, De La Soul went from Blue Mind State to Snakes is High. high. Which is a a, a a classic that is undeniable. Undeniable. Undeniable classic, man. I mean, man. The, the, the lead single, the man, all of them. Uh, what was that? Uh... It's so easy. easy. That was my joint. It's so easy. Right. <laughs> Do it now. It's so easy. Shout out to Moe Love. Um, yeah, it's so easy. Actually, you know, if you haven't heard Common before, you hear the business. Oh, yeah. Common Take brought the, the business. Town with the from yeah. Shot yeah. Town. With that proof. You so fool. You can't, can't even move. move. <laughs> <laughs> One of the favorite dopest, like, hip-hop engineered songs because it shows the freedom of like bars and expression in a yeah. style way. You know what I mean? It's D to the O, the V to, to the E. e. And we'll yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> P-L-U-G G to, to the, the one. one. Walk around the planet Earth making, making money. Have, and the C to the O double M-O-N. Sit around getting money. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So hard. That shit, I heard that shit on HBK. And I heard it like a year before that album came out. Oh, you were lucky. Like, was, yeah, I heard, it, I heard it the day I got the album. See, I, I um, I was recording that night, and I left it on the tape. I'm going walking. Y'all used to record it and listen to the tape walking to school. I heard that. I was like, "What the fuck is that?" It's like, <laughs> start slinging the tapes. Like, hey, yo, y'all got this comment in day one. Y'all hear that? <laughs> You in the tape, yeah. I was a tape guy, guy. I was a tape guy because <laughs> I had the hits. <laughs> so, now, nah, man, that album also introduced Most Def, it mm-hmm. brought a lot of um, it, it was just dope, man. That whole era of fucking album making and just hip hop creation was dope. It was, I mean, that that I mean, so many albums, even smaller albums in that same like umbrella. Because at the time, that has to be the, the Bush Baby's most popular album at the time yeah. when, when Gravity came out. Yeah, that's true. That's and, true. You know, yeah. so, and and uh, Young Talib Kweli was in that same. Reflection Eternal. Reflection Eternal. 2000 Seasons yeah, was, was, was my, when I first heard 2000 yeah, Seasons. Yeah, that was nuts. That, that was, was that nuts. Was, that was nuts. Nasty. That was nuts. <laughs> That was nuts. I still trend check the MCs now, but that was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to it now, like, yeah, y'all went hard, but I'll trend check y'all. But anyway. <laughs> 
We gotta bring the attitude era back, man. Fuck these MCs. So yeah, we the fly nerd group. But um, nah, that shit is dope, man. And moving from artificial intelligence and you know the grind day the grind when day they did, to me was a, man, a classic. Man, one of my that's solid. how they got with Ghostface go real hard. I thought you were gonna say the one with Doom. No, Shit, the Doom, oh, that, that Doom. Goes super, super, super that, tough. That, that's a ugly like, they five star two. You saying two like Ryan in the average of season? Like <laughs> they follow the beat and the beat go crazy, so the drums go. Yeah, listen yeah. to listen, listen to, to Dela. Yeah. Okay, rock co flow. Rock yeah. co flow, man. Yeah. And, um, from ooh with Red Man, artificial mm-hmm. intelligence, like they had some of the greatest guests. Trying. Yeah, trying. Baby fat. Baby fat, man. Trying and from Dave, you know, that's one of my like favorite songs, man. Just you know, the introspective. I love their introspective. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, you know what else is dope by them? It was on that DJ Han, The Trouble in the Water. Oh yeah. That joint yeah. was dope. Oh, and yeah. believe it or not, they had a dope song on the Men in Black soundtrack. The really? Men- the Men in Black soundtrack actually has Tribe, De La, Amar. It's like, <laughs> like the Beat Nuts. It's, oh, it's, like, it's like, it's real weird. It's weird, dude. None of these songs was on the movie. None, none of those songs was on the movie. But I think that, that was dope about movies back then because I think they made movies just to do the soundtrack. Tracks, so yeah. they had a movie deal and a soundtrack deal. Mm-hmm. And they'll I mean, look work. at New Jersey Drive. Yeah, yeah two volumes yep, yep, in yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. Above the Realm and yep, all that shit. Realm. Why is Pain by Tupac only on the above rim cassette? Because I think that was Tupac's album. Man. I think I would consider that a Tupac album. Because that's that song that... Because you can't... Yeah, you can't hear that anywhere else. So. Just like you can't get back at you by Mob Deep off anything but the Sunset Park soundtrack. For real? I that's thought that was on the um Nightmare... Wait, the um second album. Not the second... Mm-hmm. But back at you. see, there's two. There's there's one something back at it's you. It's right, back, it's at right you. back at you. Yeah, right back at you was on the first album. Yeah, if back at you was on the sunset because that's that one that do 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 no doubt. Mm-mm-mm. They sitting they sitting in the um. I'll 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 play the joint when we wrap up. I think when I, I know play what you're it, about, you gonna yeah. you gonna you gonna be like, oh my god because the they beat did a so video cold. for it though, right? It was yeah. black and white, and yeah. they showed the clips of the movie. Sunset Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I remember it, but okay. Like, uh, was that Saphir's? Right, where that Saphir? That was on the Street Fighter soundtrack. <laughs> that was on. We went all around the planet pitching, and no, no one hit it. I'm the first rapper of them all. <laughs> but it's <Saphir>. Saphir. <laughs> Yeah, that was that rascal Saphir. That was a. That they should have did something. Man, they should have. We moved all the way to the West Coast. Man, we just, <laughs> all across the country. <laughs> So, yeah, De La Soul, man. <laughs> De La Soul. Go, you know, they just made... In, all the with, albums are out. All the albums are out on every streaming yep. platform. So go ahead. They made 12 million off the pop already. You know, unfortunately... So them, but bittersweet. But. Yeah, bittersweet. Unfortunately, they passed. They did have a celebration. You can check that out on YouTube, too, and um, see... You know, them just, you see the Native Tongue reunion, man. You see Queen dope. Latifah and Only Love getting in. Really you dope. know what I mean? You see Black Sheep on stage. Tip was there, you know. Actually, I would wish moving forward they just do a Native Tongue project. And they, they can. They can yeah. do that, and they can have it in memory of... Of Fife and Dave, yeah. you know what I mean? And all the other lost soldiers that um, haven't been mentioned. You know, yeah, you, you know. still got Large Professor. You still got Q-Tip. Saw Diamond D up in that bitch. You know what I mean? You still got the B-Nuts. You still got all these people that's still here. You know, just hearing um, Black Sheep, the choice is yours when you hear that record. And he's really just talking about Native Tongue, bro. Like, that's right. a crew song. It's right. an you, innocent you, yeah, you crew song. You get with us, or you, you get, get with that. You get this, but, but we all crew. It's a hip-hop anthem. You know what I mean? And just hearing that, it's just like, yo, man, y'all get y'all shit together and do this shit while y'all still here. Well, we know there's a Queen connection going on because Tip is producing for LL. He is? The new LL album going to be Q-Tip? It's produced by Q-Tip. Oh, Queens man. represent. <laughs> that, that, that was like the whole host was like, like he went, like they, LL was running the thing. He came out and said, you know what? I'm not going to put out this album. And that he's let that simmer. And he went back on social media. He's like, because it's too damn good. Q-Tip, you snap. He, had, he did a whole promotion about it. Really? Yeah, where well, he was saying like he wasn't going to put it out. And like it, people is it coming about out? It. It's coming out. It's coming out this summer. I want to hear this album, LL. It's been a minute for LL, actually. 
And yeah, it's, and for him to have an album by Q Tip is that's that's a come on Q Tip man, come on back out man, come on and back out. Apparently five, Dre bro. and Q Tip working on something together. Oh, well, I don't know, but, but with Dre, you say and Dre, I don't, <laughs> don't move me, man, because that nigga be having albums. I bet you he got. You go to his studio, bro. He played music that he did from early 2000. I'll never even see the daylight. I don't like artists like that. Yeah. Uh, I kind of don't like artists like that because it's like, man, put the music out. You alive, so he gonna die and all that shit gonna come out. And it's well, gonna I mean, be, because music, it's gonna be like a Tupac thing. Because music stopped being the way he ate mainly. Once, once beats, once Apple bought beats, but Dre you can moved still into a different, put, into a different mind state. You in the bed with Apple, bro? Just put out the albums. Just put out the albums, <laughs> put out the <laughs> albums bro. There's no uh, problem. I mean, but anyway. I agree. <laughs> Moving forward from that, um, you know, check out check out all the music we mentioned. There's a yeah. lot of shit we just talked about. Yeah, it'll be educational and yeah. good for your ears. That's why the Fly Nerd Group is here. We're back, baby. Right here. And speaking of back, 60 years of X-Men. 60 full years. 60 of full years. Sheeps. <laughs> more, more like 40 for that guy. But <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> more like more like sixty for this guy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this guy and the Magneto, Magnet. and then Ice, Ice Man, <laughs> Angel, Beast. All oh, okay. Get into They're it. So let's guy. talk about the original. Let's talk about X Men. Let's talk about it. Um, shout out to Chris Claremont. Shout out to Stan Lee. They um created this. What seventies? What year? Sixties. Sixties. Sixties, and it, it it ended up being a failure. Right. In, right. It, it's as 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 big as the X Men are right now. You, it's hard to imagine that there was a point in time where they were the least profitable <laughs> Marvel book that was on the shelf. But that was the case. It got they canceled. Was dealing with a lot of issues of racism, yeah, and, uh, bigotry, and uh, you know, just unfair during the whole time of Civil War, Civil not Civil War, but you know, the Civil, yeah, the civil Rights Movement, Civil Rights, and all of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was. It was a message, you know. It was a message. It was a message of acceptance. It was failing. He gave that shit to Chris. Was like, hey, do something with it. Chris went crazy. He brought in the international <laughs> cast. Uh, <I'm> <laughs> brought in Colossus. Killed somebody <laughs> on the second mission. Yeah, you know, he, he went tough, the man. Stakes was high. The stakes was super high with uh, the X Men, and from then on to the 80s, to the 90s, you know, I jumped on in the 80s and shit. Yeah, and shit. I, same, same here, I jumped on in the 80s, and it was a wild ride. I jumped on, I started reading X-Men right before Rogue joined. Okay, okay. So I, I was there, I was on, I was on from, from like, right before Rogue joined, on through the 90s, up to the current, and it was like, it was kind of amazing, because I, I didn't know where Rogue came from at that time. Because mm-hmm. okay. she made her first appearance in an Avengers anime. Right, right, right. So I was like, I had no idea. I was like, "Who is this? Like, why is she such? Why is she so powerful?" You know. So I had to go back and cop that Avengers, and that would be dope if they actually did that cinematically. Have her take Carol's power. Take that's what I was about to get. Into. Yeah, right, yeah. Have right, her take right. Carol's power. That would be that would be. Something. Hopefully, that will work in the Marvels. The Marvels is coming up. Give Carol something to do, but <laughs> take the power. <laughs> she ain't gonna have give, nothing give to, do. You got nothing to do. Get the powers take the shit to do. <laughs> Whoops. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. <laughs> but hey, X Men popping. <laughs> right. <laughs> let's see what Rogue can do. Yeah, let's see what Rogue and Gambit going to do this year. But um, yeah, man, sixty years, and they've been through so many iterations, so many incarnations, and and, and but the core principle of the book has stayed the same. Um, they they're just doing it on a much larger scale now. They're doing it on a much larger scale, and um, actually. From that, you know, that's where all that um, narrative come from because they was like mutants and they was all about their sales. I really liked them more than the Avengers because they was very like internal and self sufficient. Yes. Um, to a point where their mutant powers can sustain communities, can sustain now could build universes and worlds yeah. to a substantial level and take over governments. Back then, it wasn't like that. They was dealing with. The um, unrest and the whole bigotry and discrimination. That's why um, you had these conflicts amongst each party, like Professor X and the Magneto. Mm-hmm. You know, Magneto's he gully. I'm for my a ride for my niggas. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> a ride for my niggas. And, and you know, 
Professor X is a writer too, but he's like, yo, we can still roll and be cool. We yeah. can coexist. It's like we, we, we get around you know mean? amongst ourselves. Yeah. And then we, and work, then with we work with them and then we help them. Nah, bro. Magneto like, nah, man. Nah, man. So and, that brought the Malcolm X and, and the Martin, Martin Luther King philosophy and theories to, to the whole, um, oh, sorry, yeah. to shake that up, but to the whole storyline. Oh, yeah. And, you know, from that, because there wasn't really villains. It wasn't really enemies. You know what I mean? They'll fight, but yeah, it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's like, all right. A lot of the X-Men problems was like internal yeah. or very, very personal yeah. or like the fate of the of mutants. Oh, the mutants. Yeah, like, oh, man. I mean, have, like, like, to, to be honest, the X-Men have saved the world by default. Not not like in the way the Avengers do. Not and see, and that's what I mean. Yeah, Avengers going to do it for the sake of the fight. And, yeah, yeah. Like, and, it's the right come thing Come on, to do. it's the right thing. X Men just inadvertently just say, to, "Hey, well, you're gonna kill all the mutants along with them." All right, well. <laughs> <laughs> like who who first though? The mutants. All right, all right, all right, all right. we fight, we fight. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. The other ones we gotta figure out, and investigate, like what's going on. I mean, Is it mutant related? <laughs> I mean, the, the government legally built. 10 story tall robots. To <laughs> them down. How is that? Legal? That is fucked up. <laughs> now that's that's crazy. Yeah, I ain't even think about it like that. Like, yeah, you got these huge mecha robots out destroyed, and it's fate, man. The mutants always die. They always get eliminated. That's all. That that's every storyline. Hey man, the mutants dead. We unless we do this, right. we got to kill this dude. <laughs> oh, we all gonna die in the future. It look rough for us. It's the last of us, <laughs> you know. So um, yeah, that's dope. That um, you know, I I got on around that time, same time. But my thing was the Jim Lee era. You know what I mean? Yeah. The full full cover fold outs and stuff. The, blue and yellow suits, you know what I mean? The Uncanny X-Men. It was the X-Men, the Uncanny X-Men. You know, I will rock with both stories. And, um, yeah, you know, Logan ho ass. <laughs> ho ass Logan and shit, you know what I mean? And you just deal with Cyclops stiff ass. The triangle with him and Jean Grey and then Jubilee come in the picture. I, I believe Storm. Cyclops get a bad rap, man, just because he a little stiff. But he like, who else going to lead them? Like, like, really, like, who, like, who, like, when you, when you think Storm about Storm led them before, Storm was a Wolverine is a leader but, before. But, but when you think about a, a field general, neither Storm nor Wolverine is a field. They can be leaders, but Cyclops look at the whole picture. He's a leader. He's, he's a, he like, he's, he, he he's out the there. strategic. He's the, he's the guy he's that's the like, guy. like, you cut them off there. I'm going to do this yeah. here. We're going to yeah. meet up over here. He's the Captain America for them. Exactly. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Cyclops is dude, but he's stiff. He's, he's stiff. stiff. He's he is stiff. But like he on is, the battlefield, he's he a like, wild dude because he likes Psylocke too and Jean Grey. Yeah, stop it! What are you <laughs> thinking about? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, baby. Please, baby, please. <laughs> you know, you got a thing for he got a thing for because uh, there was Madeline, and there was Jean, white, white. white and the white Emma, yeah, even, him Emma, and Emma, Emma, Emma. Emma. Yeah, it was tough. And Gene was alive. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably for the role with Emma though. But uh, <laughs> my personal, she was one of my favorites. I like Emma. Um, she just so like aloof. Yeah, and, but and petty. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but hey, man, <laughs> you need down the teeth sometimes. But um. So many characters, so many flavorful stories, so many, so many epics. Even now, you know, they got themselves to a point where they can run civilization. Um, yeah. Krakoa mm -hmm. and um, just the whole empire of that, of building a whole government and, system and I'm for liking, mutants. I'm liking the change of it now. I, the, the beginning of the Krakoa stuff was dope, and then the, the middle got a little muddy. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think it was because it, it was such a high concept. And when you don't get everybody who's writing the, the extra parts on that same concept or they can write on that same level, that's when that breakdown occurs. And I think it was just one of those things was like, here's this huge thing that y'all did and it was great to start. Now it doesn't seem like y'all know where y'all going. Man, House of X, Powers X was dope. And yeah, then it, was. it just turned to a mutant gala. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which I'm was, like, what the fuck? <laughs> which was, I was okay with it in terms of design work and for them announcing the new X Men team. I it thought was that fun. was great. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. It was fun. But I also felt some of that during that time was like real muddy. Like, oh, what are y'all doing? Yeah, where are we going? Where are we going? Like, okay, like, where are we going? Where are we going? Like, pick a pick a direction. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. 
So yeah, but overall, happy birthday to the X Men. Happy birthday to and, the X Men. And shout out to all the X Men fans out there. You're welcome. <laughs> you're, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. And moving on to civilizations, let's talk about the video game adaptation of Civilization Breaking Down, The Last of Us. The Last of Us, man. The Last of yes. Us. One of my favorite video game adaptations ever. Um, and when I say that, I try to think of, is there any more that's that, that good? No. It has to be good. A video game adaptation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> video, you, still, you still haven't come up with an answer. You still have not come up with an answer. Because there isn't a better video game adaptation than The Last of Us. This is the best one. They they tr- Resident Evil tried so many times. Shout out to Lance. NBA Ray. Live. NBA Live. <laughs> <laughs> NBA Live. That's the best. Madden. 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 <laughs> that was the best, man. <laughs> My bad. But yeah, man. So this is Naughty Dog's release of um, The Last of Us. Naughty yeah. Dog. This came. This game came out early two thousands. One of the dopest games. Yeah, I mean, it was a hit when it, it was a hit. Dog. It was a hit because it was a great story. It was like, you know, you don't have to turn on the TV and watch a movie. I could just play the game and be entertained. You know what I mean? So this was one of the things where they take the story and translate it to television. How are they going to do this, you think? He did a real good job. Very yeah, tailored. Excellent To job. a point where the background scenes, scenarios, all of this stuff is very reminiscent to the game. The way they was acting, the way they was moving and hunting and moving forward and even attacking the other player, other characters in the game, the NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> Use correct gaming terminology. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you, you see that reenacted in the, um, in the television series. So good. And it was very dope to see, man. Um, so shout good. out to Neil Druckmann for directing and putting all yeah. this stuff together. And shout out to Pedro, man. Pedro killing Pedro, it. we call him getting paid Pedro. Getting paid man. Pedro getting from paid Narcos Pedro. to Mandalorian to The Last of Us. Man, you to that movie with Nicolas Cage, which yeah. was hilarious. That movie, was, that movie was dope. Yeah. That movie was hilarious. The way he looked at him in the car, like them Starstruck yeah. guys, just like, <laughs> You, like, that was a bromance, man. That was a straight up bromance. He was literally he was in love with Nicholas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he played Joel in this game and um in this show. Yeah. And Joel is pretty much the protagonist mm-hmm. or antagonist, you know, however you look at it. Because the way they paint this picture now, we'll get into that. But um, you know, he you gotta deal with this apocalypse, man. It's it's like Okay, they expanded the story. They put a lot of science in it that wasn't in, in um, explained mm-hmm. in the video game, to a point where scientists just like, "Hell, bomb the city." You Me in it. I don't give a fuck. Man, you know what I mean? That opening scene with the with the kid, dude, scary. Very level. This is a horror I like. You know what I mean? I mean to, because they handle it the way I really kind of think we would handle it in the real world. Exactly, exactly. More realistically, like, handled and taken care of and yeah. focused. Because I, I, while I do believe that in apocalypse governments do break down, they don't break it down overnight. Like, you don't wake up one day and it's just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, what happened to the National Guard? <laughs> hey, man, you never know, man. A Decepticon might rise from the X. <laughs> And shut shit down tomorrow. You never know. I'm, hey, we went through COVID. Don't don't act like Yeah, yeah, no, and, and I get down. well I'm saying and like I'm saying like but the the while yes they shut down business and stuff like that, I'm saying like but for structure to disappear. I think Last of Us shows shows you that the structure didn't disappear. The structure just changed. The structure changed and it was more and of that's a, more realistic structure. That's changed. very but it's changed to a survivalist. Mm-hmm. Um, way because yeah. even if you compare this to like uh the walking dead i always was like yo man where the scientists at where 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 the white no one went to the white house like what's going on where are these guys where the important where are these guys at you know and um this is, explains it how it got deconstructed yeah, you yeah. know what i mean so um yeah, this stuff breaks out. And it's like it's not in zombie infection. It's more of a cordyceps fungi um, yeah. control your body, 
and to a point where it leaves you in a zombie state, but you're not particularly a zombie, you're infected. Um, Ellie was this young girl that was born into this world with immunity. With immunity. You got to watch the last episode yeah, I, to I, I know how, because yeah, you yeah. kind of explained in there. But um, she's born into this world, and she's immune. And um, that's very rare. You know, could be a case for a cure. Could be a cause for a cure. Could be a start of something in this world, you know. So um, we have to get her somewhere. get her somewhere. So they had to hire <laughs> Joel and his homegirl Tess to go ahead and be the guys that transport her to the next location for the Fireflies so they can run tests. Fireflies is an organization of rebellious, I would say the rebel rousers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because there was a government standard, like you said, that was running, but it turned to a more of a military state. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the Fireflies. And the Fireflies was against that. Similar to like the flag, um, what's the flag smashers on um, On, on Captain Captain, Winter Yeah, yep, yep, Mm -hmm. yep. So, um, you know, they doing this mission, and this is where the game kick off, man. You got to travel state to state, state to you know state. what I mean, season dangerous. to season. In these dangerous environments, you know, it's not even if you're not thinking about the infected. It's the other people. There's other people you got to worry about, man. You get robbed, killed, raped, all types of shit going yeah, on I mean, in huma- here. Humanity is the worst. So, yeah, so the <laughs> world structure... And went from sugar to shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From me, sugar you know to I mean? shit. Yeah, because that's a great way to put it. You know, it's like the Western days when killing is susceptible. You know what I mean? You're not going. You know, you're going to catch nothing for doing that. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like you know. Oh yeah, gun, gun fights is common. Gun fights is is very common. All this stuff is common. So, and it's kind of necessary to live. And live in this yeah, world. That's the, that's the that's the caveat. And that's that's what perpetuates this story to a point where um you see this violence, you know this violence is happening, but it's all for what kind of cause is this? Is yeah. this good or bad? You know what I mean? What's the consequences for all of this happening? Yes. You know. <sighs> and just to expand the story from like, you know, from Bill yeah, Bill and Frank. Bill and Frank. You I, know what I, mean? I like that they told us that story. I like I I and you know I, I read the whatever people out there. I get it. I whatever, whatever, whatever. That, I don't care man. about that. That was a cold story. That was a cold story. That was a cold story. Like, like and the what they were ain't even the most important part. Nah. That was a cuz cuz Frank was living that life. I, I kill everybody to come by here. Frank is goon. <laughs> That's what it is. It, I mean, I wish they would have expanded on that and just to show how much a goon Frank is, but they talked about that and um play the game. You know, you got to have yeah. a reason to play the game too. Exactly. So play the game and then you could get that other which full is, scope uh, of Which Frank. is now the number one selling game in the world. Why not? In the world. Why not? Like right now. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I mean, from each episode, the subscriptions and the viewers was just rising, rising. and rising for each episode. The last episode was like a killer. I you know believe I mean? uh, on, on Steam, the game thing, I believe like downloads of The Last of Us crashed out at one point from so many people at once trying to like download it that they had to like set up extra server farms. Crazy, and it was, yeah. it was, it's, it's, that's, yeah, it's that's insane. Le- that's legacy, man. I haven't played part two yet, but I don't know, they're kind of itching. Kind of you know, it's is the 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 series. I didn't like the story though. Makes me want to play part, so I can just just so I'm ahead of the next season. Right. <laughs> I just want I to know what's ahead. happening next. <laughs> I, just want, I just want to up for next season. <laughs> so uh, yeah, man, if you haven't checked it out, there's great episodes. A great episode with the young um, with the bro and his yeah, little brother. Boy. You know what I mean? Like how Heavy. they how Heavy. they. And shout out to all the people they hired the voice actors. Yes. It's Troy Baker is yes. in the series. The actress who did Ellie is in the series as well. Um, clickers, these zombies, you know, they hired the original voice actors for this Close. stuff. So when you hear them clicking and creeping around. That's from the game. Man, I want to get my controller or a shotgun <laughs> or something. I got to protect my family here. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's like, you know, it, it's shit like that. It's very reminiscent. That makes that makes a good quality video game production to a TV production. And that's how you're supposed to do you're it. You're right. Where it you doesn't, know. where it doesn't. You, you can't tell. You, 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 okay, you know what? I give points to The Witcher. I give points to okay, The Witcher. Okay, yeah. 
They st- it's not better than Last of Us, but I give points to The Witcher for being a, a good adaptation. It's a good ass. For being a good adaptation. It's a good adaptation. Yeah. I, so I was honorable so, mention. Honorable mention. But Witcher. Last of Us is like so. It, it's just because it's, it's like mirror. It's, you see some of these clips that are online of the game and the actual series where it's very similar, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, it, didn't they do the exact design for one of the, for like that one that when had... When you're walking in the library, yeah. yes, yeah, that's the library. like crazy. You walk in some of those buildings, it's like, yo, duck, yo, they about to come to the left, Joe, look out! <laughs> <laughs> Get the shaggy ready, man! <laughs> but, uh, you, yeah, that's the whole similarity and that's what's dope about it. Even some of the words, some of the phrases, some of the dialogue, everything. You know, and just the journey of seeing this without playing the game mm-hmm. is kind of dope because I don't have to stress about nothing. Like, right. I, I ain't dying in this. <laughs> got to play this game level over again and shit. Yeah, like, nah, you, you ain't know. got to give up your whole night. <laughs> right, yeah. Just, trying to beat this bloater all day, man. <laughs> so, nah, you, you ain't got to deal with the 14 hours to play. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to get the story. And the story hit hard. You know what I mean? You it see does. Ellie go on this journey. Journey, you see Joe from the field game being this tough guy, but then they show more emotion yeah. into the into the series. Which I, I, I like when he character. connected with his brother and had that conversation. Exactly. And then and Ellie was like, No, yeah, you, 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 you. don't palm me off on nah, nobody don't, else. Don't, don't do that to me, man. You, <laughs> you supposed to do this, and you know you want to do it. Just front. Yeah. Stop being scared. <laughs> Stop being scared. Like a word. In the scary world. <laughs> like a word. Right, in the scary in world. In the scary world. Stop being scared. <laughs> but you got you get to see this um remarkable story and how they uh make it through this um camaraderie and dealing with the thick and thins of this survivalistic world and it's just crazy, man. And the love that grows between in the bond. Oh, yeah, and the bond the between them. Yeah. Grows between them is very uh, is unmatched, man. So um yeah. Yeah. Yeah, check I 100 percent agree. Check out The Last of Us or HBO Max if you haven't. It's the full full season full on season, there, yeah. so you can do a flat nerd binge, flat nerd binge. If you haven't, check out The Swarm on Hulu. Oh yeah, honorable mentions. Too. Honorable oh, yeah. mention. Go ahead, that's a flat nerd binger right there too. You know what I mean? Shout out to Donald Glover. It's about um, it's a little bit beneath the story. It's ideally about a fan that goes crazy. A Beyonce fan <laughs> that goes crazy and um, go on the killing spree. It is actually based off a true story, um, but that's just the surface. It's really just about a serial killer, dude. right? And how um, it's like it's how a child from a messed up background could result into this bad behavior. Okay, it's a really psychological thing. Okay. Too. It's on but my, it's, it's on my watch list. Yeah, yeah. so it, um, check that out. The Swarm is dope. Yeah, check it out. We'll talk about it more. Oh, yeah. I, we'll definitely expand on that. And speaking of things we definitely need to talk about, we got beer. We got beer! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our, our next chapter, Plum Foolery, is out and is at Haymarket right now. I'm going to go ahead and just do a pour live on this camera. Go ahead. So just pour see me something. So you can see what, what oh, it's going Oh, look at the rich. Now. What were y'all saying? There's a commercial on Fly Nerd Group Instagram. <laughs> the rich porter. Um, <laughs> the panache. The panache. And... <laughs> Uh, I need Perceptor. <laughs> like the Shout out to the and his sophisticated scriptwriter. <laughs> oh, yo, what the hell? I was cracking up. Like these guys are funny guys, man. Flat nerd group. I, I just, I just read the words. <laughs> I just read the words. So pretty much, this is a plump hooray. Um, brown sugar, fig, fig um, porter, and it's really dope, dude. It's a really dope, rich flavor. Full body it tastes great. Full body. We actually assisted in in the creation. Yeah, we he were was there. there. On hand, we, we, we on hand throwing plums in the, the hops. <laughs> stirred the hops. Stirred hops. <laughs> shout out to Mike. Shout out to Haymarket. Shout out to um everyone that participated in us throwing our events there, doing the Fly Nerd Sundays, which will be coming back, which will be coming back very soon. And um, you go out there and get this plum foolery, man. It's really good. It's really good. You super, know what I mean? Super tasty. It's at Haymarket. Haymarket. Cheers. cheers to that. All right. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Fly Nerd, cheers in this bitch. 
So, um, yeah. yeah. I think I think we've given them enough to digest for this one. 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 It sounds good to me, man. When, Another... when we come back, we'll, we'll, we'll have what? Shazam, Fury the God. Shazam. Watch. We'll have John Wick 4. John Wick 4. We'll have motherfucking... Um, the D and D movie. The D and D. Oh yeah, the D and D movie. Dang, D &D movie. there's a lot of stuff going on. Oh yeah. And um, whatever else you know, TV and music, you know, whatever news we come up. Mandalorian. We, Mandalorian started. So if you haven't checked it out, it's on the second episode now. Right. It's cool. It, it, it's dope. It's dope. Don't let me just say it's cool like that. Y'all take it's it in a way. But it just started. Um, I think there's a lot of things to look forward to with this um, Grogu, this Baby Yoda. Yeah. And I think it's a real Baby Yoda because they brought in a certain character in the second episode okay. that made me say, okay, cloning is real. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I think... I mean, we got to remember that the Jedis originally did commission... The cloning in Camino way back in Attack of the Clones, they had a hand in that. Yeah, they had a hand in that. So yeah, we may figure out that Baby Grogu was a little bit, a uh, little bit different. You know what I mean? From 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 everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. But others of his kind. Yeah, yeah. And just to see him get into the Mandalorian and the Jedi thing is kind of dope too. He gonna be talking. He gonna be growing. Like that's what I'm saying. He's gonna grow. So um, that shit is dope. So yeah, check out Mandalorian if you haven't. We'll be talking about that more in depth in uh, the next few episodes. And yeah, but bottom boom, bottom bean. This is the Fly Nerd Group, and we're saying goodbye, Coach E Soul Star and Cosmo Galactus. And that's all we gotta say. That's See y'all in the next. Say this motherfucker. We out. <laughs> that was good.